In 1927, an American journalist wrote, a change has come over our democracy. It is called consumptionism. The American citizen's first importance to his country is now no longer that of citizen, but that of consumer. The growing wave of consumerism helped in turn to create a stock market boom. And yet again, Edward Bernays became involved, promoting the novel idea that ordinary people should buy shares, borrowing money from banks he also represented. And yet again, millions followed his advice. He was uniquely knowledgeable about how people in large numbers are going to react to products and ideas and so on. But in, term, in political terms, if he were to go out, so I can't imagine that he could get three people to stand and listen. Wasn't particularly articulate, was a kind of funny looking, and didn't have any sense of reaching out for people one on one. None at all. He didn't talk about, didn't think about people in groups of one, thought about people in groups of thousands. So I would have nothing to do with him. Hello? Bernays soon became famous as the man who understood the mind of the crowd. And in 1924, the president contacted him. President Coolidge was a quiet, taciturn man and had become a national joke. The press portrayed him as a dull, humorless figure. Bernays' solution was to do exactly the same as he had done with products. He persuaded 34 famous film stars to visit the White House. And for the first time, politics became involved with public relations. And I lined up these 34 people and I'd say, what's your name? He'd say, Al Jolson. I'd say, Mr. President, Al Jolson, next day, every newspaper in the United States had a front page story, President Coolidge entertains actors at White House. And the Times had a headline which said, President nearly laughed. <laughs> and everybody was happy. 